Hello again AI Legends and today I'm going to be covering a cool new framework that I've been playing around with which is Camel AI. This is a first look video, not a tremendous amount of time I've been spent with but just a couple of days that I'm playing with it and I'm going to share my thoughts and a quick demo for this video. All right. So here I have the, the homepage which is uh, Camel AI and <clears throat> right out the bat they're, they're looking at building a multi-agent system for various purposes. So then they are a open source framework and they have a community that they're building around it. It's really cool stuff. I'm just going to scroll through the uh, homepage to see what they have. So they're quite focused on the building and practical applications too. And I find it's really interesting that they are trying to find the scaling law of agents. So I'm not really sure what that means, but let's run with it. My impression is soft. They want to find where the boundaries of agents lie and how much it can go. That's my take, but you know, do check out the, their, their page. So just to point out that they also have like a research focused side of things. So Camel AI is, is one of it. Um, <clears throat> Crab is a benchmarking kind of framework that they're building. And they also have a paper that's on um, uh, modulating trust in agents. And Oasis, the last one here is a large scale simulation of agents. So really cool stuff. I'm just gonna run through again quickly. So with agents, you get the usual stuff that you see in other frameworks as well. The underlying engine or models, which are the LLMs under the hood, sending prom, prom, uh, prompting, uh, prompt chaining and prompt engineering, and also adding tools and having your agents have memory. So pretty awesome. And I was quite uh, also impressed with this. Um, testimony by both the economists and also uh, from Mistral. So looks like they're doing pretty cool stuff. Uh, do check them out. And I'm going to jump on to the founder. So this is his homepage and his name is Gohal Lee. So he's a pretty seasoned uh, researcher at Oxford and also at King Abdullah University. And he has really good connections and advisors from both sides. So I believe he's currently full time on building Camel AI at the moment. And he's also published in lots of tier one machine learning journals. So really awesome chap to check him out. Yeah, so on to what uh, I'm gonna show today. So this is a very simple multi-agent framework that uh, I built up with Camel AI. So I wanted to have a, um, a human task right at the top where we say, hey agents, I need you to complete this broad task. And then that gets passed into the blue agent, which is the planner and overseer agent that will kind of break down the task to little chunks that will be executed by a worker or researcher agent in green. All right. And I've given this research agent a tool, which is a search engine. So it can go and look out for more information if it needs. And that information is then passed back to the primary overseer agent or supervisor agent, whatever you want to call it, and that <clears throat> output will be evaluated. So sort of having two agents or LMs talking to each other, and once the, the overseer or the primary agent is happy with the final output, it will complete the task and send back the outputs to the human. So that's essentially um, how the framework is built out. Yeah. So I'm going to jump into the demo now, and then we come back to my final thoughts on this framework. So I have a super quick demo here, which is built on uh, Streamlit as the front end and having Camel AI and also OpenAI on the back end. Okay, so OpenAI and I'm using GPT-4 as the main engine behind the, the agents and also Camel AI as the framework that, that allows this sort of communication to happen. So here I'm going to have like a healthcare focus kind of application and that's where my passion lies. So I hope you guys run with me. Uh, so here we're going to have a um, agent do a research on a diabetes app that I want to build up. So I'm going to give it the task here. So let's change this. Um, help me build out a diabetes app to reduce complications from insulin use and also design a pilot for feasibility study. All right. So this will 
this is my task and broad idea for the agents and let's see how they break it down so i've got start and you can see up here that the the agents are thinking and then start to run okay i'm going to scroll down a bit see so we have kind of three boxes here um first again is the ai planner or supervisor agent that will start sending out tasks to the worker so here is starting out with a task of um hey look at the can you tell me the core features of an app and the AI worker is sending out some instructions and results there. All right. So I also have down here a tool usage uh, <coughs> box. So in case the AI worker is going out to search for things, I can see what it's actually searching for. So again, um, a bit of hit and miss in that sense. I, I can't actually force the agent to search for, for, for uh, extra information if, if, if I want it to. It's kind of deciding on its own so it's a little bit black box in that sense but in some runs i've got it to go and search on DuckDuckGo, and that will pop show up here so we'll do another different run later on to see if we can have this um two usage show up okay i'll let it go for a while um just very broadly how i feel about this framework compared to other frameworks like crew ai that i've tried um well i think outright there's quite good and a lot more customer like customizability in the the code so i think that's quite nice to get fine green uh, control on the number of iterations that agents talk to each other it's a little bit less orchestration as what crew ai does um, but a lot more fine-tuned also they have really great examples of different types of apps that are built on this framework um, so i'll go on to their website and check it out uh they have very nice integration with different tools so uh real-time information via dapier a, a modern web scraping tool called firecrawl discord integration and they even have a agent ops integration as well so really cool stuff they are compatible across different llm providers so you can even use uh, providers from your local side of things like olama and vlm um and I like that they are pretty research focused. So, you know, depends on your use case, I suppose. Um, while working with the tool, I found that they do use slightly different terminology from the other frameworks, which is initially a bit confusing, but I think in principle, it's really much the same. So instead of using multi-agents um, or hierarchical agents, they call it societies. And when, how do you set it up is to get them to role play. Uh, so kind of similar to how Crew AI says you, you give the agent roles and build, give it tasks to do. Pretty similar, but just slightly different terminology. Um, I think a major uh, hitch or uh, drawback that I found with the framework is that I couldn't add more than one assistant agent. And I'm not sure if uh, it's a limitation in the framework at the moment or it's more of a philosophical design where they sort of limit uh, two agents to talk to each other or maybe it's a skill issue i don't know but you guys tell me about that and i really had some trouble with the two integrations uh with other LMs. so it works nicely with the open ai api right now but gemini I, I went through quite a few bugs there it's not too sure what's happening okay so that's my takeaway for camel ai what do you guys think and I'm also going to see if the agents are using these tools now. If not, I'm going to do another run and see how that goes. All right, so I've restarted the app and I'm going to see if it's going to use tools this time. So I've given it a simpler task. Say, can you design a diabetic app to use insulin and reduce complications? I'm just going to let it run and Ah, there you go, right out the bat. So here, just want to show you the two use that it can it can do. So right down here, um, if you have a look. So it's gonna search out on that that go and check, um, what the best practices in personalized insulin dosing and remind us that the uh, diabetes management apps are currently using, and we have some of the results that it's gonna take in, and use for its own responses so i'm going to give it 
uh, a minute or so to fully generate and work out um, and work out and I'm going to also evaluate how great the response is okay so here we can see again the the supervisor agent is giving different tasks and working through different tasks uh, iteratively with the worker so firstly it's going to go and search what are the best practices uh, then it's going to say identify any real-time uh, glucose monitoring integration hmm so personalized insulin dosing reminders, key features for real-time glucose monitoring integration, uh, list of educational resources, best practices uh, for dosing reminders. So all pretty relevant stuff. Love it, love it. So just give me a moment to read through and I'm going to give you my final review. Okay, so we're back and I spent a couple of minutes just skimming through what the agents were talking about and I quite like it. I think it's covered quite a wide space in just a couple of minutes and definitely better than what I can do on myself searching Google in two minutes. So I quite like that it's taken into different aspects of the, the app design and product space. So not only is it uh, able to pick up sort of relevant clinical things that I myself will be looking out for. For example, all the complications related to diabetes are sort of covered in the app design. So looking at uh, nephropathy, skin uh, problems, uh, retinopathy, that's all quite relevant to diabetes management. And I quite like also how it's included um, regulatory sort of requirements uh, on the app design pathway. And uh, there's an element about involving clinicians and telehealth as well. Really good. I'm not sure whether I saw anything about um, dietitians in there. There is some bits about gamifying uh, involving the community, educational sort of uh, resources on the app. So oh, pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, and on another run, I guess it also depends heavily on the, the initial prompt that I put in. Uh, so in another run, I have also asked it to design a pilot study for me. And it's pretty good. It's given out the timelines for the study, what the outcomes, uh, the checklist, the patient checklist that needs to be done, like a survey, a follow-up survey, based on actual tools that we use, like quality of life, uh, tools and assessments. So I said overall, really pretty, pretty decent. Um, pretty good for like a really quick hacky thing, but yeah, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if, you know, this is something that you would use as a researcher or designer or product person. Um, and yeah, I just had really quite a bit of fun playing with Camo AI. I'm going to check out some other frameworks as well when I have time. But otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one, AI Legends. Bye-bye.